Hi everybody, welcome back to the Schumacher MI9 build and we're now on to drive shafts. And what fantastic drive shafts these are. They're a fantastic design, lightweight, smooth, no play, and the wear is incredible. I mean, or zero wear, as I should say, really. In, in testing, they don't seem to be wearing at all. So I think, uh, again, Andy and the team at Schumacher have done an incredible job. Um, say they're lightweight, compact, any, everything you would want from a drive shaft. So anyway, let's uh, put one together. They are a bit tricky to put together, but I'm going to show you how I do it. And uh, hopefully that's going to help. Um, it's, they're not too bad once you uh, sort of get a knack. So uh, let's crack on with it. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is we need to put the small bearing on the end of the uh, drive shaft. This is the part that goes into your diff out drive and your spool. Um, and you've got a tiny pin with a tiny bearing and an even tinier circlip. So this is the Schumacher Racing eye test. So basically, first thing we're going to do, obviously, is just pop that bearing onto that small shaft. It's a nice, tight, smooth fit. Um, and there's no need to grease this or anything. I just leave that all dry. because The bearing's not going to turn on the pin, so it's best to keep that dry. And uh, for maintenance wise, I wouldn't really ever take this apart again, um, unless it was a breakage, a broken bearing or something. Um, I would leave this basically for the lifetime of the drive shaft, lifetime of the car. Um, if for cleaning purposes, I just sort of, um, you know, a toothbrush, a bit of tissue, just sort of wipe it down, but I wouldn't really take it apart. I wouldn't soak it completely in uh, brake cleaner because I don't like soaking bearings uh, in in brake cleaner if, if I can help it uh, because I find you just sort of wash more dirt into them than you take out. Um, so I would just leave this as they are once they're built. So we need to get this uh, circlip on. So what we need to do is grab hold of it and get it into the slot. Now once it's sort of in the slot what I tend to do is just sort of rest my finger around the outside. Now, hopefully, when we get the long nose pliers and start manipulating that into place, my finger just sort of holding that there is going to stop it pinging around the room. So I'm going to get the long nose pliers. And what I tend to do is go from the outside edge of the clip, the outside edge of the bearing. Um, obviously, if you try and do it just onto the pins, of the clip, you're not really going to be able to pull it over. So you need to sort of go from the outside of the bearing to the outside of the clip and just sort of rotate it over like that and then you get a bit of a click as it goes in but what i would also do just because you know it's a tiny little part you can barely see it uh, and you don't want it coming out uh, just get a, a blade of a knife flat bladed screwdriver and just on the back of the clip just make sure it's fully home that one is that if if you hear a click it's normally home so that's that and that's that together it's a it's a bit one of them things that's just a bit of a knack to get you know once you've done it a few times uh, it's quite easy Okay, so moving on, we're now going to build the, uh, the rest of the drive shaft. We're going to do the rear drive shaft to start with. So the most important thing to note here is there is two different pins. One is 7.8 millimetres and one is 7.3 millimetres. The 7.8 is going to go in this at the end of the drive shaft and the 7.3 is going to go in this at the front of the drive shaft at the beginning, you know, by the wheel end. Um, now, if you put the small one, in here, you're going to get away with it. But if you put the long one in here, it's going to bind the drive shaft. So you need to pay attention to this. So you need to either measure it with a vernier gauge. You can sort of see by eye, to be honest with you, that that one is longer than that one. But if you just want to be, uh, you know, check for sure, just pick one of the pins and pop it through the one that goes at the drive sh at the uh, wheel end, and pop that through so it's flush, and you can see. That, that sits proud now if it was the right pin it would be flush so if it's sticking proud like this then you know that it's the one that goes at the far end okay so once we know that the next thing is just putting it all together and i'm going to say grease 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 i get fed up of seeing cars in the pits at races with brown dust on their dry shafts like a rust coating um, if you use grease, your drive shafts are going to last for ages. And yes, you do have to be a little bit more 
um, you know, on it with maintenance. So, you know, two or three race meetings, clean the drive shafts, regrease them because the grease is going to attract the dirt. But if you leave them dry or even just a little oil, I don't like the oil, um, they wear so fast. If you take a real car, for instance, I mean, the drive shaft could do 200,000 miles, do the lifetime of the car if the boot's intact and it's full of grease. If that boot is, uh, is broken and the grease has gone out, you know, they'll be done in 10,000 miles. So it's exactly the same thing. So, yeah, we haven't got the boot, so we are going to attract the dirt. But if you clean them regularly, um, you know, it depends on your track. So a dirty track, you're going to clean them more regularly, a clean track less regularly. I tend to do that after every one or two race meetings. I just take them apart, clean them up and put them back together. I mean, you, you can get away also with not even actually taking them apart. Just put them in uh, the whole drive shaft, except this end, I'd say, because what I was saying earlier about the bearings. Just drop it in a, say, a jam jar full of brake cleaner, give it a good shake around and a brush, uh, the toothbrush, and get all the dirt out, and then just sort of smear some, smear some grease into it will, will help. Um, but I would tend to take them apart, clean them, and put them back together. It takes like 20 minutes. Uh, 20 minutes one evening during the week when you know in between the race meetings and your drive shafts are going to last forever in a day right so having said that let's get it all together okay so the first thing i'm going to do is take the bone and if you've got them all out together like this just make sure you've got the right bone so the rear one is the longer one got a slightly different end here as well but the longer one is the rear drive shaft and the shorter one is the front drive shaft We've got the rear one, and all I'm going to do is take the grease. grease. This is Core RC um, drive shaft grease. It's brilliant stuff. This it doesn't fly off, doesn't really attract the dirt. It's just perfect for the job. So I've put a coating on there, and then I'm going to get the yoke that goes over it, and I'm going to place that on, sort of roughly lining up where the uh, the pin is going to go through. There we go. And then I'm going to get the pin that we now know is the, the right length, the shorter one. And I'm going to dip that in the grease and then just go through the hole there. And the good thing about the grease as well, that's going to make it a lot easier to build because it's not going to just fall apart and the pin fall out. Then I'm just going to dab that in the grease as well, just to get some on those pins. And then it's a matter of putting this together now this is tricky because you've got this clip to go around so the best way i've and the easiest way i've found to do it is i use my shock pliers i've put an elastic band around the end so it makes it like a grip like a like a vice and i'm basically just going to pop that in one of the holes at the end so when i put that down on the uh on the flat surface it's stood upright and it's so much easier to work with so what we're going to do now is this is going to sit in here on the axle that lined up like that and we've got to put this clip on so let me take that back out for a sec and I'll just show you the clip so the clip is sided or handed whichever way you want to look at it so you've got a slot here which is where the pin is going to go and then a shallow sort of lug above it and then a deeper lug below it so the deeper lug is going to go downwards. So the deeper lug, furthest part away from the slot, is going to go out towards the wheel. And the shallow side is going to go inwards towards the diff. OK, so just make sure you get that up the right way. If it's the wrong way, it's going to sit proud and it's going to catch on things. So just make sure that you've got your deep side down. And then what you need is a good pair of um, circlip pliers. The Core RC have done some for the job, which work absolutely perfectly. Um, pop them in there. You can just use normal circlip pliers. Anything that's sort of a, a circlip plier that works in this way uh, will be perfect. Uh, but these are sort of made for the job and they're small and neat. And you can just chuck them in your tool bag. Um, so they're perfect. And that's it. That's going to open your pin and pop it on. It's going to make it much, much, much easier. So I can pretty much hold that like that. And then I'll get the uh, assembly that we've got here and uh, I'm going to pop that into place. Like that. And then on here, you've got obviously you've got your pin sticking out either side, and then you've got a flat. 
So my the pins where I'm pointing on the um, the circuit pliers are going to go to that flat because that's where the middle is going to be. And then obviously these two slots on the outer side are going to line up with your pins. So drop that over the top. You can sort of like uh, sort of like a magic act. And then it's basically just a question of bringing that around and dropping it into place. And then you just sort of wiggle it around. It should all snip into place. You can probably take it out of there now. And it's just a question, there you go, of just manipulating that clip into place. Now, to make sure it's fully home, again, it, you'll hear the clip. But what, what I've found is if you just sort of pull the drive shaft down, you don't, don't pull it hard, but just sort of pull it down so that the disc is bottoming out on the axle and rotate it round. And if it's not home, it will tell you because it will ping off. But if it's uh, if it rotates around like that and doesn't ping off, then it will be in right. And then obviously just again, just rotate the drive shaft. You want to if you rotate it like this, the drive shaft should st or the axle, sorry, the bone should stay sort of sitting on your finger, nice and relaxed. If it's lifting up and down, you've, you know, it's something's tight. Uh, maybe the clip's not on properly. Maybe the maybe you put the wrong pin in the longer pin. Um, so just as, as long as it's all nice and free like this and it rotates and stays in its position, then everything should be absolutely good to go. So then the last part of the rear drive shaft is grease again and then just a little dab either side on the, the back end. And we're going to pop that on again. Again, sort of lining up the hole. And then we're going to get one of our longer pins, a little bit of grease. Slide it through, and there you go. That's one rear drive shaft. We shall do the front in a few seconds.